Untouched by intimacy and covered in wrinkles, Teresia has never seen the nakedness of a man and for 122 years she lives on with the unfulfilled desire, a defiant hope and a courageous spirit of waiting that one day a man will emerge and embrace her soul. This woman here is 123 years old and yes, she had never spent a night with the company of a man. <laughs> Stop it. Get some help. Women in their 40s is the most unhappiest age group out there. Think about that. The unhappiest age group in all of the world, predominantly, we're talking about the states right now, is women in their 40s. That's one in four Americans, which is crazy. As 25% of the population are women in their 40s, and they're the unhappiest group out there. If you are single and you are in the dating marketplace at that time, when that happens, say you're 37, 36, 38, 40, whatever it may be, and you are still on the hunt for that man, and you hit the wall and you can see in your face that you are no longer the face that you were at, what, whether it was 30 or 35 or 25, whatever it is, you are going to be panicked. Because now you know that you are going to compete with women who are younger, who are largely more fertile, not always, but largely speaking, yes, who have that youthfulness to them, who have that estrogen, progesterone, whatever the hormonal balance is that makes someone young, it's there and you're losing it. And you become hyper aware of that. And that is why women begin to panic. It's sad. And also in some way, I think it's embarrassing for women that are put in those situations because how do you make it to 40 and not learn how to get along with a man? I never married, I chose not to marry. But I always love it sometimes when uh, guys will say, you know, that's my wife, or my wife called, or I gotta get this for my wife. You know, just when you hear the word wife, and yeah. you know that he's talking about you. Do you like that? Do you go, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Um, it, it feels great, but I can say to make sure you have your own life before you're someone else's wife. Yeah. And- <laughs> Beyonce, your pandering game is on a whole nother level. <laughs> but real quick, before we unpack what Beyonce just said at the end right there, do understand this, especially for all you young cats out there who may not have the context, but Oprah and her impact back in the 80s and 90s for the growth and the spread of feminism was far beyond what Andrew Tate was able to accomplish in the past six months. She was the representation of, I don't need no man. I don't need no ring, forever dog mom, fighting the patriarchy at the helm of work such as the color purple that did irreparable damage to black male image and at the helm of Western culture through these ideals of empowerment fed to you every single day in every single American household via syndicated TV. Her cultural impact has not been dissected enough, but there's a little bit of Oprah in every modern day feminist today. But anyway, modern women will eat up exactly what Beyonce is saying because having your own life is without any context here whatsoever. Word to the wise, mottos or quick sayings do not make great life advice because people will affix this short saying to whatever panders to the stage of life that you are currently in and want to stay in. Well, what if living in your truth is parting your ass completely off, posting beach thong selfies every single birthday and consuming endless amount of love and hip hop, Kim Kardashian content sprinkled with a bit of I don't need no man podcast. Or is living in your own truth having purpose, accomplishing amazing goals, staying fit, working on components of your femininity, 
or making yourself more marriageable material. You see, instructing those to have their own life doesn't necessarily prepare you for having a family life. While she's speaking to Oprah, who is legitimately the feminism final boss. So of course that's going to be the message because if she had the antithesis of that message, then it would impact her pockets. But the reality of the softer words that Beyonce used is based off of the truth that Oprah, while building a financially successful life, has five dogs, which she proudly calls her children with no biological children of her own and obviously from this question still craves to be called a wife. But shout out to Stedman though. I just had like the craziest, saddest thought. Um, I'm in the stage of life where I'm- Over 30 dating in LA is awful. This is interesting. Okay, let's keep going. I'm watching all my friends get married and have babies and find love. And I had another talking phase yet again fall through. And my friend was like, you know, you'll meet the one one day. Don't give up. Maybe not. But now I'm at a point where I hope I don't because... What happens if I meet him and he wants kids and I'm too old to not be able to give him any? So it's easier for me to say I don't want kids. Let me just let me just come on this real quick before this ends. Um, women, please stop posting you and your issues up on social media. This is what your therapist is for. Um, right, like this this is what your therapist is for to talk about these things in a private setting. Um, especially if this is just your personal account, unless her business is tied to this, right? And she can somehow monetize this. I don't understand the reason why you would do something like this. Plus me, as a man who appreciates women that are stable within their emotions, if I see some shit like this, you're getting wrote off. You're getting wrote off because at, here's the way that men like me think, st men who think strategically and intentionally. At any given moment, if something within our relationship goes incorrect, you're going to go ahead and have your Aisha Curry type moments where you might say completely off the wall or outlandish ish off of the strength of your emotions. Dudes like me that are searching for pure, unadulterated peace, joy and happiness just can't have that. Having like a weird existential crisis. I don't know why I'm posting this on TikTok, but I think I just I need to know I'm not alone. <laughs> I'm so single that whenever they ask for an emergency contact, so done with dating. I just been put in Jesus. <laughs> I don't know what I thought. Like, I genuinely thought that it was going to be people. What happens if I meet him and he wants kids and I'm too old to not be able to give him? It dawned on me. So it's easier for me to say I don't I'm want sorry. kids. It dawned on me. Your existential crisis. That I'm 46 years old. And I don't have a husband to take care of me. Hi guys. Like, I'm I so sad right now because I just came to like a realization these past few yes, days have been so hard for me. And I missed out on marriage. I'm 46 and years old. And children. I still need my mom. And right now I'm like, oh, I don't care like if you are rich or poor. Take care of yeah. Yeah. Dark, yeah. Handsome. I you as long as you're a man, I had a husband and not being born. And you're pretty, like, that's the only qualification I need because I'm just so desperate for a husband. Because I have pressure on you. It's not. If you can give me, I'll propose to you. I'll marry you immediately. I'll wash your clothes and I'll help you change. I'll help you change. I'll help you change. I'm 
It just sucks. For the women who learned the hard way. Study predicts 45% of women will be single by 2030. Single men are lonely, but single women are empowered. Funny how they position that. Yep, you read that right. It's estimated that 45% of women ages 25 to 44 will be single by 2030, according to Morgan Stanley. There are a few reasons for this prediction. One, women aren't getting married young anymore. There's so many other options to do in their lives that getting married is no longer the default option. They're focusing on their careers, going to grad school, traveling, hanging out in their social circles. Two, we aren't having babies like we used to. With more options for birth control than ever before and treatments for infertility, the pressure to have kids within a certain time frame just isn't there anymore. And with these pressures gone, so is the urgency to get married for the sake of starting a family. This right here is a very interesting article. I'll leave a link to it on the description box down below if you guys wanna go off and read the entire thing. I think reading studies like this involving singleness in the future in conjunction with seeing TikTok clips just like these, you begin to understand the issues that are plaguing our society today. I think that a lot of these issues were not diagnosed even as little as 10 years ago, but through the proliferation of social media, we begin to see a different picture of what's happening in reality. Questions, comments, concerns. Y'all already know what to do. Mediocre tutorials and reviews at gmail.com. Guys, what'd you think? Also, guys, let me say this as well. New website. Go to www.mtarmy.com. If you guys want to check out the new community page, you can see all of the relevant links to get involved into the sphere. You understand? Hopefully, you guys enjoyed today's compilation. I know that I did. Until next time, you two. Peace. You don't want to see me get vexed. Boss on your phone, tell the man you can't jet. The big guy, the ones who can't stretch. Breaking the neck when we in the car next. You don't want to see me get vexed. Boss on your phone, tell the man you can't jet. The big guy, the ones who can't stretch. Breaking the neck when we in the car next. Dead bars, need a fibrillation ASAP. Get boxed with a straight guy. I'm reminded of my state they lack.